Let's briefly introduce DHCP. DHCP stands for the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It assigns TCP IP information automatically to computers. Chances are, if you've worked at a computer system, you have worked with DHCP. Your computer has probably obtained an IP address automatically from a DHCP server. So it's a very commonly used protocol within the TCP IP suite of communication protocols. The type of information you might get includes the IP address, the net mask, the gateway address, and the DNS server IP address. Now there's plenty more. There's at least a hundred more options when it comes to DHCP, but these are the big four. DHCP version four is defined in depth in the request for comments number 2131. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. It uses ports 67 and 68 by default. The server side uses port 67 and the client uses 68. And it employs a four step process known as DORA, D-O-R-A. And here's an illustration of that four step process. So here on the left, we have a DHCP client and it uses port 68 outbound. And when the computer first boots, it broadcasts out to the network to try to find a DHCP server. It does that with port 68 outbound. That initiates the four step process that we refer to as DORA. The first step is the discovery phase. If there's a DHCP server on the network, the client should discover it because it's gonna broadcast everything on the network. And here is the DHCP server. This listens for incoming requests from DHCP clients, and it does that by default on port 67 inbound. Once it gets discovered, it offers a particular network number and IP address to the clients. Now the client doesn't have to accept this. You never know, the client might want to go to a different network or a different DHCP server, but more often than not, it will accept that. It will say, okay, that offering looks good. I am requesting that IP address. I'm requesting that officially. And if everything looks good to the DHCP server, it'll say, okay, I'm gonna write that information into my log. We're gonna create a lease for you and you will get that IP address for X amount of time, however long that lease is. And you set that at the DHCP server. We'll be doing that later. After it's done that, it acknowledges that that IP address can now be used by the clients. Now the client can communicate with all the other systems on the network. So that's just a very basic example of how the four-step process works. Let's take a look at the DHCP server that I have running right now. This is a Debian server and it's running DHCP. I'm gonna log in. And one of the commands I like to run is the SS command and I use the dash T-U-L-N-W parameter. When we do that, we see the various ports that are listening right now. And so for example, if you look here, we see the IP address of this system and the port that's listening, port 67. That is the DHCP port. So we know right away that this has DHCP running. It is a DHCP server. And it does that on UDP, connectionless, non-guaranteed. And uh, it does that on purpose. We use UDP on the server and the client side. Let's go to a client system. This is a Debian client. I'll bring up a terminal and we'll run that same command, ss-tulnw. And if we take a look here, you'll see that there are a bunch of listening ports. And here is port 68. Again, on UDP, that's port 68. That's the outbound port for DHCP. So this client uses 68 to look out to get an IP address and the server uses port 67 inbound to listen and hand out IP addresses. 
Now, how do you know if you have a DHCP address? Well, if you're on a Windows client, it's very easy to tell with ipconfig slash all. If you're on a Linux client, you might not be able to tell that as easily. For example, if we do an IP space A and take a look here, we see the address, but we're not quite sure what it is. We do see dynamic over here, which helps us to understand what's happening with this IP address. But you never know, you might not get that information. Or if you're using the nmcli command, you might not see what is happening as far as this address goes. If you're not sure, the best way is to go to the configuration file. Uh, to do that, I'm going to log in as root. And we'll take a look at the networking configuration file. This is running Network Manager. So we'll go to slash Etsy slash Network Manager slash System Connections. And inside there, we'll see our connection, our wired connection one. And we can take a look at that. I'll just run a less on that name and take a look. And if you look here for our IP version four address, it says auto, automatic. That means we're getting it from a DHCP server. So that's one way to tell here. If you are working on CentOS or Fedora or Red Hat, it's going to be a little bit different. The path is different. For this, we would go to slash Etsy slash sysconfig slash network scripts. Okay. Inside there, you'll see your network configuration file. And if we take a look at that, you'll see boot protocol DHCP. So we know we have DHCP here. It's possible to get a DHCP address and also have a statically assigned address, which would show up down here. But again, if you're not sure, if you're running commands in the command line and you're not sure whether it's a DHCP address or not, go to the configuration file. And those paths are different, whether you're on the Debian and Ubuntu side of things or the CentOS, Red Hat, Fedora side of things. And here is the request for comments number 2131. This is the best place to start if you really want to learn more about how the technical nitty gritty details of DHCP works. And so for example, this is searchable. If we do a control F and do something like DHCP discover and go down a little bit here, here we go. Here's the step-by-step -step process. And here's the four-step process we just talked about. DHCP discover, DHCP offer, DHCP request, DHCP acknowledgement. There's actually more to this but we're going to leave it as the four-step process for now. And you'll note that this obsoletes this older request for comments. Uh, and in addition, this one has some individual updates. This is not deprecated. This number 2131 request for comments is not deprecated. It's still valid, but there are individual updates to it. So for example, if we go to 3396, we'll see there are updates for encoding long options. If we go to 4361, we see there are updates for node-specific client identifiers. So that's additional reading for you. Also, request for comments 2132, which tells you how DHCP options function in a DHCP server. I don't care what DHCP server you install, it's got to comply with TCP IP rules and how it works, the request for comments standards. Now, if you're interested in the whole list of DHCP options, uh, the IANA has that, but their site is actually down today, which is surprising. But also, if we go to the ISC, isc.org, these are the people that create the Kia DHCP server that we'll be installing you'll see a whole list here at document AA01323. 
and it shows the whole list of options. So you can find these really anywhere on the internet, but this is another good place to go if the IANA site is down. And we see everything. We see router. That is code number three. So when you specify that you wanna have a gateway or a router address, you can say it by name, which is router, or you could say it by code, which is three. Domain server, which is code six. Host name. Uh, let's scroll way down here. Another one I use very often is domain search so that clients know what domain to search on the LAN. And that's code 119. So if you're ever wondering about what the codes are and what the names are and the whole list of options and the associated RFCs for each of those, this is a great place to go. Okay, so to review, DHCP is the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It assigns TCP IP automatically to computers. And we're talking about IP address, subnet mask or net mask, gateway address, DNS server IP address, DNS search domain name, and so on. Clients use port 68 outbound by default. Servers use port 67 inbound by default. And for DHCP version four, we incorporate a four-step process known as DORA, discovery, offering, request, and acknowledgement. And again, if you're interested in learning more, definitely check out the request for comments. That's it for this sub-lesson.